like we always do at this time. And every time we strive to do the mother, you know what I'm saying? She break out the time. Ain't going nowhere. Niggas is mad. Thank you for those strikes y'all gave me. It enhanced me. Perfected me. Made me a little bit better, you know what I mean? I told y'all, it ain't about the money with me on here. Never happened. Just about the voice. Let people know. I'm the voice of the two been relationships. And we don't care who these haters is. Fuck these other bloggers, y'all. Niggas, my kids. North Break City and North Side kids. Niggas sucking shit because they know what it is. <laughs> anyway, Jersey, stand up. Much love. Rochester, New York, stand up. Much love. Motherfucking, motherfucking Florida, Broward County. All up and down Sunrise Boulevard, all up in Franklin, all up in Sunland Park. Yeah, they, my boys down there in Hollywood, Liberia, Dane. Now, man, Hollandale. Niggas out there in Dade County. Boys out there in West Palm Beach. Pahokee County. What up to everybody, man? Just shouting out, you know. Places out there in Dordan and Endeavor. My people out there in Jackson, Mississippi. Shouts out to y'all. Much love to Jackson, Mississippi. Nah, man. Alabama. What it do? Tennessee. Nah, man. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go back. Way back. Back with Snoop used to lie like this. Nah, man. On some real shit. Snoop sat on this interview, right? And I just listened to the words that came out of his mouth. He said some real shit. The really shit ever came out of his mouth was him and Pac wasn't friends like that when Pac passed. The first thing came out of his mouth was he was scared to death on that plane just before they got to Vegas. Cause now I can remind you something else. I can go back and play you a whole nother video with Snoop saying that he was somewhere else. Big back in the Mac when he found out that Pac got killed. Then he was at Warren G house playing the video game. So Warren G should be able to come in on this story and be like, yeah, Snoop was at my house the day we found out Pac died. But I can guarantee that ain't really happened. But even if it did happen, Snoop sat back and watched. Now, just as sure as he fixed his mouth, I'm sorry, my, my volume went out. Sure as he fixed his mouth to say, well, Puff Daddy, just as sure as, uh, this video, the volume keep going out, y'all. Just as sure as Snoop Dogg fixed his mouth to say, well, Puff Daddy and Biggie is my homeboys. I wasn't fucking with him. That's why they put him on the plane. And I'm going to say this in quote of, what is that kid? Sean Blazing. He was under the cover with a butter knife and a goddamn fork. A goddamn shrimp fork at that. To my son, somebody was going to die. What you was going to do with a butter knife and a goddamn shrimp fork, Snoop? But you let them tell it. Everybody is shaking in their boots that Keefe D got caught because who could Keefe D tell on? Could Keefe D tell on Puff Daddy? Could Keefe D tell on Snoop Dogg? You know? And then it, get, then it goes to the question to ask yourself. What do he got to say about um, Suge Knight? But listen to this shit. Check this out. Let me just, um, um, we we going to go over some facts here, right? We're going to go over some old facts. Before I get started, i like to say, shout out. To Big Homie TV. Shout out to Big Homie TV. Credits goes out to Big Homie TV. But it's raining with my wife. Next time I get a call, you know, they be like, turn on the news, turn on the news, guys. I'm at Warren G House. You turn on the news, you see the yellow tape, Shug, BMW. Call Shug, you're like, yeah, hey, Pop, you go come on out here now. Drive out there. I see him in the bed. Hey, nothing. No words, no conversation. I see Jesse Jackson, his mama. His mama pulled me to the side. She made me feel like a real player. She tell me my baby loves you. And I love you. And I don't care. She just hit me with what I needed to hear. You know, coming from a mother. 
she was strong at the time. Everybody else was crying and breaking down. She was real strong. And she just held me real tight and she just said a prayer with me. And I know I went there, I hollered at him for about 20 minutes and I went in the bathroom, I fainted, I threw up. I just was like, I was gone. Like my whole, because me and my homie wasn't straight. You understand what I'm saying? It's like, I, I'm not even gonna be able to apologize to him or even just to tell him I feel you, I, I'm wrong or whatever. We never got that day and that's the way it ended for me then. To where he passed away and I never got a chance to, you know, apologize or even just tell him, you know, what, what is, what, how can we fix this? How could he fix what? Now ask yourself, if he didn't do no wrong, how could he say he was wrong? What was you wrong about, Snoop? Now, if y'all forgot, some people did. Some people forgot what Snoop Dogg said that while he was on the plane, Sean Blazing with the goddamn butter knife and the goddamn shrimp fork. Now, I'm going to show you why he was on there with the butter knife and the shrimp fork. out here, he used to hang out with us. They ride in the most risk, we used to go smoke, chill, the whole nine. When he made that record, the last record he made, he played a song for me. I went to the studio with him. He was like, I want you to hear this song. He was working with 10 Crack Commanders in this room with, with Green. He took me to another room and he played the song. I'm just now you hear this, right? I'm just giving you the ballistics of why Tupac ain't fuck with Snoop Dogg. I'm just showing you. I'm just showing you why. So if, if people ever got it confused, like, oh, Pac was just tripping. No, he wasn't. Dreaming of the <coughs> of and coops and trying to sell records like Snoop. Oops. He played that record for me in front of all his homies. When the record went off, I was like, oh, you killed that. Like, I just want to give you some love, man, let you hear this. But his perspective, you could just tell that he wasn't tripping. He wanted the world to know, I love Snoop Dogg. Snoop Dogg loves me. Because I had already put it on the line that I loved him. But he, he could never come back and say, I love Snoop because he had to stay in his lane because Pac was on him sometimes. You know what I'm saying? So when he expressed that on that song, that let me know that our friendship was going to always be there no matter what. And, and I seen him again when he got his leg. I guess he got in that car accident or something. I seen him in Atlanta. This is right after Pac got killed. And uh, he was in the hotel. And I seen C. I'm like, where he at? Uh, he's like, he's upstairs. I'm like, let me holler. I'm like, hold on. Because, you know, they didn't know what was going on. You know, they was, te you know, checking the temperature. Yeah, and, and Pac checked your temperature too. Because Pac knew. But let me tell you, you see all this shit, buddy, buddy shit he was doing. While Pac was going around saying that Biggie them set him up. Puff Daddy them set him up. Andre Harrell set him up. Because Andre Harrell was mad that Tupac ain't take the movie deal that he wanted him to take. And after that, he was public enemy number one. Now, I'm going to show you, like he said, in this interview, he said that him and Tupac clashed at the Angie Martinez video. And, I mean, um. Um, press conference in New York. They had went to New York to the radio station to do a little little, little press conference there. She asked him, um, "How do you feel about Puffy and Biggie?" And I said what I felt. They're my homeboys. I love them. When I got back to the hotel. It was a whole nother atmosphere. Like he sent his homeboy up to get the bullet for me, as opposed to him coming to me. Who talking? Now I remind you, why would Pac want to be your fucking friend, and you standing right in his fucking face with his adversaries? Talking about, I love them. Yeah, home, those my homeboys. I said, fuck, fuck you. I don't care that y'all beefing. Why would I want to be cool with you anymore? Because like I said, I don't hang with people who hang with my enemies. Once I see you chill with my enemies, I'm letting you know your man, I'm not rock. You got a fucking decision to make. God damn it. Because this is a game of life. This ain't that bullshit ass game that people out here playing and, and, or, or, on Atari and Sega and the motherfucking PlayStation. No, this is a game of life, nigga. You're not going to put my shit in jeopardy, nigga. You hang with that buster. You stay with that buster. Don't come back around me. We good, all right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And even if you do hang with him, don't talk about that nigga around me. Because you know we're not cool. But you hear, what, you hear what he was saying. But then you wonder why he got his ass on that goddamn plane with the butter knife. And the shrimp fork. Now, first of all, Pac wouldn't even go to him and get no weed. Which Snoop let it be known that he was selling drugs on the whole tour. But hey, he's an agent. So ain't nothing gonna ever become of that. But Pac didn't even want to talk to him to get weed from him before they got on the plane and he got the butter knife and the shrimp fork. 
children that none of my security ride with. I had to ride on the plane with him, his homies, and the clock. And it was the most uncomfortable ride I ever had in my life because my nigga didn't say nothing to me the whole ride. And that's a five hour flight on a private plane. Five hour flight, Pac wanna speak to him. You wonder why, right? I, c I can tell you why. Cause like I said, and when Pac died, Snoop thought that it was the funniest shit known to man. He said, yeah, last time I saw him, he was in there on his deathbed, taking his last breath. So I walk up to him, like maybe three hours into the flight, get back to him, like, uh, you going to Vegas, though? You see, he kept asking, but you going to Vegas, cuz? And understand, Tupac was killed by who? The Crips. Who is Snoop Dogg again? The Crips. That's why he tried to go over there like he was a Martha Stewart and all this shit with the big, with the big Barney suit on, the big purple gaze, the, the rainbow suit, as they call it. That's what they said the color purple represents. Strength. I guess just your sexism and shit, shit like that. You know what I'm saying? But, hey, hey. Who am I? Corrupt mother. But anyway, you want to hear the story of this man on the plane with a butter knife and a shrimp for, right? Here we go. Turn on me like this. So I'm talking to somebody else. I'm like, all right. So I go in the back, put the blanket on my head, knife in my hand, fork in my hand, and just sleep the rest of the ride. Because I feel like they finna try to do something. So when I get off the plane, we land. He walk out. I got a Rolls Royce, he got a Rolls Royce. He walked down the steps, I walked down the steps. Me right here. I'm like, cuz, you going to Vegas? He do me like this. Mm. When his man, he went my way. Next time I get a call, you know, they be like, turn on the news, turn on the news, guy. Now, now, he kept asking was he going to Vegas, and they had Lane, Lil Lane, and Keefe D, and all them niggas, that, that Snoop Dogg. Now, this is this, how funny it is. Snoop Dogg hooked Puff Daddy up with Keefe D, and them. So when they come to LA, and smoke and chill, that was the entourage. They was chilling around the Crips. That Snoop Dogg, right here on the screen, y'all. This guy right here on the screen, allegedly put Puffy down with, because Puffy was his homeboy. Oh, that's my homeboy. Then like he said, oh, they used to come out of the Cali, and, and y'all know how it is. You have to check in, right? Who you think Big Eno was checking in with when they came to California? Snoop Dogg, homeboy, Keefe D. And, 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 and the reason Keefe D ain't mind doing that to show night because he felt like, listen, nigga, you stepping on our toes with this money, brother. You know what I mean? Like, you really stepping on our motherfucking toes. You know what I mean? And... When Show Knight started playing that tough shit, they didn't mind shooting him and Keefe D looked at Show Knight right in the face as they did it. Now, he tried to say that he went to the hospital after all this shit. Show Knight called him and told him to come down. Like, sure, if Show Knight was using his noodle, don't you know that the nigga was mad at Charlie Charlie made him get on the plane without his bodyguards or his crew and intimidated him? Ain't no telling what was said on the plane while he was on the plane. Snakes on the plane. And this man tried to say that, but he went and seen Tupac. He went in the bathroom, started crying, and started throwing up. Yeah, yeah, I would have threw up too, because I know I got this nigga set up. This shit going to come back on me. You know how you be real nervous? You be like, I hope they don't lock me the fuck up. That's how Snoop was feeling. So every time you point your finger at Puff Daddy, Keefe D, you got to point your finger right back at Snoop Dogg. Got to. You got to. And she just said a prayer with me. And I know I went there, I hollered at him for about 20 minutes, and I went in the bathroom, I fainted, I threw up, I just was like, I was gone. Like, my whole, because me and my homie wasn't straight. You understand what I'm saying? It's like, I, I'm not even going to be able to apologize to him, or even just to tell him I feel you, I'm, I'm wrong or whatever. So you know you was wrong for what you went and did with Big Eno. But the last time he saw up to, now, he thought it was funny on the Sway interview when they asked him, when the last time you saw Pac? Do that sound like something a friend would say? Well, that sound like something somebody would say that said, ah, I got you back. And you gotta remember that Dogfather album ain't sell shit. Listen, think about it this shit, way. This is how we gonna do this shit, right? 
Check this out. Acclaimed actor dead at 33. Who? At 53. Okay, I guess that dude died, y'all. Goodness. Look, was look, grand jury confirmed Sean Combs was involved in Shakur's, I guess, death. But check this out. How many units did Snoop Dog Dog Father album sold? Now look, watch this here. Watch this here. Watch this here. See that shit? Y'all see that shit, right? Dog Father, 1996. What year part, Doc? Now check this shit out. Y'all may show y'all, y'all may show y'all what made him mad. This is what made him mad, y'all. And I'm gonna sit right here. I ain't gonna stop this bitch. I want y'all to see exactly what I'm doing. Look, now check this out. How many units did Tupac or Oz or me sold? Two million, right? Two million, right? And then Tupac comes out and sold five million. Damn, there's six million fucking albums. Making Pac the highest selling album. It was charted on Billboard's Billboard 200, 405 weeks in total. In total. You wonder why he was so mad? His album ain't sell shit. His album just did sell two units. Two million. Just did. Two million, two hundred thousand. Pac shit sold damn near six million. Damn near three times the amount his album sold. Which is what that means. Snoop Dogg and Bow Wow Wow Yippee Yo Yippee Yay has took a back seat to Tupac Shakur. The new dude that he advised they bring to the album. I mean to the label. And when he got there he took your spot. I'd have been mad too. But just know y'all. Just know. This guy on the screen. It's connected to Keefe D, Lil Lane, the Crips, and everything else in Cali. And the way that Sean Combs, if Sean Combs is involved, who else you think is involved? It's gonna come, it's gonna boil back to Snoop too, y'all. So if ain't nobody tell y'all this first, remember y'all heard it here first. I see Sean Blazing talking about it too, so I know Sean Blazing up on game. I respect that, brother. I watch his videos a lot. I respect it. Even though he be laughing and playing. That should be having a punch to the meaning. You got to understand what the meanings is, though. See, if you dumbfounded, just like he was like, oh, yeah, them nigga had a butter knife in a, in, in a fork. But you had to catch that. It makes you want to go look at the video. Then you see he just threw the flavor in there. But that's what it is. Shouts out to Sean Blazer. Mad respect, mad props to him. Credits goes out to him. Much love goes out to him. Big homie TV, much love goes out to you. Mad credits goes out to you. Nothing but love here. If y'all don't know who Big Homie TV is, go over there and check him out. Because he did this Snoop Dogg video here six years ago. Six years ago, a friend of mine asked him to say an MC rhyme, and they heard the rhyme that he's about to say. They said it's play that went two blocks away. Oh, let me stop. Let me stop. Let me stop, man. That, that was too ill right there. But anyway, y'all, uh, thank you for listening. Thank you to my moderators. Thank you to my subscribers. Thanks to everybody who rock my channel, man. I appreciate y'all. Much love. I'm sorry I don't do lives a lot. I'm going to get better with that shit. Y'all know that. I'm going to get better with it. I'm going to get better with it. I'm going to get better with it. Because I know that's the watch time hours and all that. But I ain't in for the money. So I let the dudes who chase the money do them lives and shit like that. Because they need the money, I guess. Poor fellas. I'm about to buy some real estate. I'm going to start renting some of these bloggers' houses. So y'all bloggers, y'all down or y'all lucky. I need somewhere to live and shit like that. Your baby mother might be kicking you out and shit like that. 
Just holla at your boy Costa Don. Daddy got you, you know what I mean? <laughs> shout out to everybody who listen, man. You know what I'm saying? If you ain't hit the like button, hit the like button. If you ain't hit the subscribe button, hit the subscribe button. It's merch down at the bottom. Buy you some kicks to put on your snake ass feet. I'm going to put some sneakers down at the bottom for y'all. Do me a favor, order some of those sneakers, man. Don't just look at the shit and be like, oh, those are tough. Those are fat. Tell me some sneakers you like so I can put them up there on the chart, especially if they have Foot Locker, because I'm fucking with Foot Locker right now. So if you if you got some sneakers you like and you want them at Foot Locker, holler at me. If you got some sneakers that's on Foot Locker and you want me to put them up so you can get the discount, because you're going to get a discount when we get them on my on, on here. Shouts out to Foot Locker. Shouts out to I, I, was it, Amber Crombie and Finch. Shouts out to y'all. So I shot the Cartier, ain't never see one of the type. Now, I'm mean, nice to still Cartier, it's nice to do burglaries and shit. But anyway, it's your boy Cos, man. Salute, cop back, shoot, I'm gone.